Hey guys, what's up? It's Ryan. Today we're going to be making banh mi. And before we get into it, you're probably thinking, what does this white guy know about banh mi? And let's be honest, not much. But lucky for you and me, there's a lot of people in the restaurant industry around me who are willing to share their information and all the goods on how to make it and whatnot. Yeah, this is my first time making it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So here we're just going to be starting with some bone-in chicken thigh, just to save on some cost. We're going to flatten it out nicely with our knife. We're going to be really careful with what we're touching. Going to wash the cutting board immediately after because we don't want to contract any salmonella. We want to be really careful with this process. Next we'll be making our marinade with about two tablespoons of fish sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, four tablespoons of canola oil, three cloves of garlic microplaned or grated, one whole lime zest, one teaspoon of coriander seed, and we're just gonna toss the chicken in. Give it a good old mix. For our carrot and daikon pickle, we're just gonna try and keep the size nice and consistent. Four to six centimeters long, about the thickness of a chopstick. You can do it a little bit thinner if you want. I did just like this, pretty thin, about one centimeter in diameter. And we're just gonna do the same thing for daikon and carrot. This is a cold pickle. So we don't actually need to heat up our pickling liquid like a hot pickle. For example, the onions that we use in my Korean taco recipe. So we're gonna add our sugar and our salt right away. We're gonna give it a good mix with our daikon, releasing a lot of that moisture. Adding our carrot next. You can see that moisture coming off of those. Then we're gonna add our rice vinegar, maybe some sesame seed and some habanero in with it. Our mayo-based sauce will have three cloves of garlic, one whole lime for juice, some kewpie mayo, sriracha, and maggi seasoning. This is very essential for banh mi. You can sprinkle it right on top or mix it like I did in the video. You can cook the chicken in a multitude of ways. Here I'm just pan searing it. You can cook it on a grill, but I just have this available, so that's why I did it this way. Just make sure you rest your chicken before you cut it. Choosing the right baguette is quite important. You want something that's able to get crispy. Unfortunately, my selection was quite limited, so I committed a little bit of a sin when I got a soft baguette and I don't have an oven to crisp it up. But I'm just gonna be creating a little bit of room inside so that all the toppings will fit. Make sure you spread the mayo on the bread first, nice and evenly across the entire surface. I love the sauce, guys. I think the pickles are incredible. I think that it just goes really well together. Uh, not too much that I would change. Next time I'm probably gonna get a better baguette, something a lot crispier. I think the chicken was great. Probably could grill it next time um, for a little bit of charcoal flavor. But overall, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out and I'm excited to continue making them here at home. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be going to my favorite banh mi shop here in Vancouver. Gonna buy one just to compare to see how I can improve and just continue to challenge myself and take from the greats, you know? So today we're gonna to go to my favorite banh mi shop here in Vancouver. It's called Banh Mi Saigon. It's excellent. The baguettes are so much better than the one that I used yesterday. Uh, I'm pretty excited and yeah, we're gonna compare what they do and how I can learn from it. Hey, let's go! All right, we got a chicken one here. We got a special one here with some cold cut. Looks like some ham, some pate. Super excited. Pickles look excellent. Got some cucumber cut lengthwise. That's something I can do. Very excited. Oh. Wow. The baguette is so crispy. The chicken is just, I just need another bite right now. I can't even, 
So I think the moral of the story that I learned here today is that the baguette is one of the most important things for creating banh mi. Definitely I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna source that out next time when I make banh mi. It's just not the same to have a chewy baguette versus something super, super crispy. Yeah, super excited to give it another go next time and thanks for watching. Yeah, I'll see you next time.